Hello and welcome to a fursuit building time lapse video. Um, this is a repost of a sort because the original voiceover was quite rushed and I wanted to fix it up a little bit. So here's the improved voiceover. I start off with a balaclava that I cut out of spandex and then I put it on the mannequin head that I have and then start gluing foam on top of it to start creating the head itself. I always have a lot of references of the character I'm creating on hand and ready to go, so I can accurately shape the foam to how I want it so it fits the character correctly. I use paper to draft out some of the parts of the head, especially the muzzle and the ears, because that is much harder to draft without it and just by eyeing it. Once I get the main shape of the muzzle cut out, I start gluing it onto the face and then I continue to build up the layers so I can carve them down later. It's always better to add too much than too little because adding little pieces here and there is much more annoying than having to just continue to carve it down. The main tools that I use for this process are a lot of different scissors um, an X-Acto knife, and most importantly, a glue gun. I have two sets of pins, ones that I use on fabric and one that I use to keep the foam in place while it dries. It's very important to hold the foam in place while it dries so you don't have to keep gluing it over and over again. This is something I struggle with since my attention span is that of a goldfish, so I always have something playing in the background to keep me occupied while I'm waiting for the glue to dry. At this point, you can see me start to carve out the cheekbones and the bridge of the nose so it starts to resemble the character that I'm creating. These parts of the face are very essential as they give the character their expression and also help with the eye placement. The eye ridges and the eyebrow placement are also very important to the character's expression. You will see later that I tried about four separate times to make the eyes and I wasn't satisfied with them, so I ended up changing them after this video was recorded and edited. I was initially going for a 3D eye effect here, which is why I was raising the ridges of the eyebrows and the um, under the eyes quite a bit more, but it ended up not working as I said beforehand and changed it to a 2D eye instead. Here you can see me start to create mock-ups of the ears out of paper so I can figure out their proportions and where they should sit on the head. I was happy with the ear shape initially, but when it came to positioning them on the head, this changed quite a few times because I had to make sure that they sat evenly on the head and that they would look correct when they were finally furred. You can see me adding foam to the top of the head to smooth out the foam to the balaclava. And at this point, this would just be considered a normal foam base. This would not be a ready to fur base. This would just be a regular foam base. Foam bases like this typically take me 15 to 20 hours to complete. And this is usually one of the hardest parts for me and the most tedious parts for me. The other tedious part for me is sewing all the fur together and then having to make sure it fits and then shave it down. Now starts the eye construction. I create my eyes out of buckram and craft foam. In the future, I wanna try creating eyes out of plastic, but I do not have the tools or money to try that yet.
I use paper mock-ups to figure out how the eyes will fit on the face, in the eye area, and where the pupils and the iris should be. This one was a little bit easier because I had already drawn the eyes onto the base. Typically when you create 3D eyes, you're going to want the eye itself and then you're going to want another piece of foam or whatever material you are using and then glue it perpendicular around the eye. The height of the ridge will vary depending on how it fits in the head, so don't be afraid to cut it down a little bit more and see how it fits within there and see if it achieves the effect that you are going for. I usually use craft foam to create the eyeliner of the eyes, but I wanted to try foam this time, and I enjoy using fleece a lot better than foam. I still have to work out a couple of kinks in the technique, but otherwise I am much happier with the look and the build of the eyes with fleece. You can see me on my second attempt of the eyes. One thing that I realize is that to achieve the follow me effect, the pupils and the iris have to be circular in the eye. Now I'm starting to line the inside of the mouth with black fleece. I will later add a tongue and teeth. I also take this opportunity to sew the black fleece to the inside liner so there is no foam or glue that will be touching the wearer's face. For this particular character, she has a helix piercing on her right ear, so I sewed a black tube around the ring, and then I stuck it in the little hole that I had pre-cut in the ear. Here is what I thought would be the final versions of the eye, but a few months later I would change them again. Now I start to add the teeth and the tongue into the mouth. The teeth and the tongue are both made out of fleece, and the teeth are stuffed with polyfill, so they are plush. This is my first time ever putting saber teeth on a character, and it took me a few times to get it right. I was initially going to glue the teeth straight onto the base, but it was too flimsy that way, so I put a piece of foam in the base of the tooth and then glued it onto the face that way, so it would have more stability. Now that everything on the base was done, I start to tape one half of the face to pattern it. The reason I do one side of the face is because this character is symmetrical, so it makes more sense to just make one pattern and then flip it for the other side of the head. If the character was not symmetrical, I would have to tape the entire head and pattern it individually. All the patterns, the fur color, and the fur direction are marked onto the duct tape, and as I cut it off, it will be drawn onto the face as well so I remember where everything goes. It is very important to label your pieces, otherwise you will be playing which piece goes where for hours, and you do not want to be doing that. It is not a fun time. I transfer all the pattern pieces onto paper and making sure they lay flat. When you're cutting the pieces, make sure you cut them so it's easy to sew them back up again. When you're all finished putting your pieces onto paper, cut them out and label the back side so you remember which one is which. When tracing your pieces onto fur, 
I like to label the duct tape side down P and not labeling the other side. This helps me distinguish the right from the left side. Typically when I get new furs in, I like to take a corner of the fur off and do a shave test to make sure that it can be shaven down to the length that is desired. Now starts the long, tedious process of sewing all the pieces together. I like to sew together one half of the face and then the other half of the face, and then sewing it together to make sure everything fits properly. I didn't do it in this video, but typically I would pre-shave some of the pieces so I don't have to deal with it when I'm trying to glue the fur onto the face. The first part that I tend to glue on is the ears. This just makes it easier so I don't have to battle with the face fur when I am trying to glue on the ear fur. I start by fleecing the inside of the ear, and then I move on to the actual ear fur, and then I Henson stitch the fur to the fleece so there is no thread or seam showing. Depending on the character, I will sometimes add a bit of 
fur in the inside of the ear to add a little bit of fluff. I just glue this straight in and there's no special technique involved. I just fold the edges underneath so you don't see raw edges of the fur. I do a quick shave down of the ears before starting on the main part of the head. Also again, so I don't have to battle with the other fur. Shaving the main part of a fursuit head is probably one of my least favorite parts to do, even though it can be satisfying at times. It's just so nerve-wracking when you can nick the fur and then show the back on accident, and then you'll either have to replace that whole piece or you'll have to just deal with it. I recommend keeping some sort of vacuum or brush or something nearby because the fur fibers flying everywhere is not a fun time. I also highly recommend wearing some sort of mask or covering to keep the fur out of your system because that is also not fun to feel the fur just sitting in your lungs. I do a big mix of razor and scissor trimming. It is just nice to get angles that the razor can't reach with the scissors. Now that I'm mostly happy with the shaving, I start to sew the mouth fur to the fleece lining on the mouth. This starts to bring together the whole character and you finally get to see what everything looks like when it starts to fit. I also add in a lip on the bottom jaw and that's a pretty typical thing I do on all of my suits. And I also add a ridge, I guess if you want to call it that around the nose to give it a bit more definition and so I can hide those raw edges around the nose because otherwise it is very hard to do that. The neck is done in a pretty similar fashion to the rest of the head. You take a pattern, you trace it onto the fur, you sew it together, and then you sew it on to the head. I do tend to use a stronger stitch when I am sewing up the neck just because there is so much tension happening in this area of the fursuit.
Once the neck is fully sewn on, I start to sew the inner liner to the neck fur. This doesn't have to be the strongest stitch since the neck fur takes most of that tension. The final thing I did for this suit was sewing together her hair floof and then attaching it to the head. I also did a quick size alteration since I did make it a little bit too small for my head, but otherwise she was done basically after I had sewn everything together. In total, this suit took about 28 hours and her entire head was done a day before a local meet. So. I'm very proud of how she came out, despite her being slightly rushed. Thank you so much for watching my video. Um, please consider liking and subscribing, and following my other social media accounts. It should be linked in the description below. Have a nice day, y'all!